Man, I was doing some more research. And do you know, as an American, your grandfather in 1960 made way more money adjusted for inflation than what you make today. Your grandfather, average wage in 1960 was $5,600 per year or about 480 bucks per month. Adjusted for inflation with the average income, as I proved in the other video, being 35,000, your grandfather with his $5,600 made almost $20,000 a year proportionally more than you make today. But that's not the worst of it. Inflation in 1966 was 1.7%. We're not even really getting into it. We're not even really getting into it. A home, the average cost of a home when your grandfather's Average income was $5,600 per year. The average home cost $12,000. So that meant if your grandfather put down $2,000 on this home and did a mortgage, his mortgage payment was $75 per month. So your grandfather's mortgage only took up 18% of his income. So you proportionally have less money in the average mortgage, average house price is 10 to 12 times average income. And when you really start to look at the numbers and you look at how much money, because one of the things that I want to do here at the Institute of Economic Thought is to illustrate, to educate you guys on the American income problem. Most Americans haven't had a substantial wage increase in the last 40 years. So your grandfather's $5,600 per year in 1960, it was $20,000 more. Like adjusted for inflation, your grandfather's $5,600 was $54,000. $54,000. And let's look into it. What was happening in 1960? Detroit, manufacturing. Uh, America was about 15 years post-war. America was booming. There was jobs everywhere. There was opportunity everywhere. Once again, going back to the example of there was very much upward mobility in America in the 1960s, in the 70s, in the 80s. But see, we started to run into a problem once we got rid of manufacturing. I mean, I was just I just did that research on the humbug. I just like, you know, let me go ahead and see what the average income was for 1960. And that blew me away because that meant your grandfather with his single $5,600 was able to do what two couple, what two income couples are doing by his damn self. And also inflation wasn't an issue. We didn't have as many taxes. California wasn't knocking people across the head from a tax standpoint back then. If I could go back in the time, what I would do is go ahead and create a trust. And then I would go back into 1960 and I would get me 50 properties, 50 properties, and leave them in that trust and just have them managed until now because those 50 properties would be worth millions, would be worth millions. There's so many things because when you look at income, and this is one of the reasons that I feel that there are so many scams on YouTube is everyone is looking to increase their income. I don't think 
a quote side hustle is the answer. I think a small business is the answer and we need to reframe our thought process and conversations. You should, you know, and cause say a side hustle, when you say side hustle, the assumption is there's something that you can do in a limited amount of time that can make maximum money. That's the inference from a side hustle. Whereas a small business, number one, you're keeping your job and you're working more. And I think we need to reframe the conversation. We need to reframe the words we use and we need to get away from side hustle and move towards small businesses because 140 million Americans have an income problem that is going to be detrimental. You're making 35 K a year. There's no way you can save for retirement. There's no way that you can save up for your kid's college fund. You simply don't have enough money in this inflationary period. You just don't. And you know, where I'm heading with this is the corporate citizen. You got two choices. You can keep working that low wage job and keep trying to do what you can. And next thing you know, you're going to be 60 and you will not be able to work anymore. And you can very much be living in your car. That's the thing. Google living in your car on YouTube and you will see a bunch of young people because they don't have any money. And what I'm seeing is an emerging number of older people living in cars, living in vans because they don't have any money. I feel that that demographic is going to surplant young people living in cars. Once again, looking at the tea leaves, 140 million people make $35,000 a year or less. Once again, or less, let's, let's concentrate on that less. Fast food workers make 20 to 25,000 a year. You got two fast food workers. Cause essentially what I have noticed is people in the food service industry often date people in the food service industry. So you've got food service worker, Al making 25,000. Then you have food service workers, Laureen making 25,000 together. They make $50,000 proportionally adjusted for inflation, your grandfather by his damn self made more money than Al and Alice working jointly by $3,000. He made more money and paid less taxes and endured less inflation and endured less taxation and had better. And also in 1960 credit existed, but it didn't exist the way that it does today, which I feel Credit is dangerous. If you have a low income credit is one of the worst things you can embark on. If you have a low income, because what you do is you're already not making any money. Okay. Then you rob the future to do stuff today because of interest. So if you're low, like, you know, uh, recently, like I told you guys, I did a home flip. And one of the, one of the expenses I put on the credit card and max out the credit card was like 35,000 and that reported to my credit, but that reported to my credit report. My score dropped 40 points because that one card was maxed out and I have a lot of credit. And I was just sitting there like, whoa, whoa. Cause I was under the assumption that because I have so much personal credit, I got like half a million in personal credit that if I could use hundred, maybe 150,000 and my score will remain high. That is not the case. If I used a hundred K of my personal credit, my score would be in the six hundreds based upon what happened with that one credit card based upon what people here on YouTube say, you know, my, my credit, my score shouldn't have moved. You know, I'm just using 30,000 out of 500,000. It dropped. 30, almost 40 points. Cause that one card was maxed out one, one, just one, just one. So credit is something that you need to be really careful. 
because you know I went from like an 840 to like an 801 you know I still have a high score but just looking at that if I used 100k of my credit and let's say we experienced almost a 40 point drop for each maxed out credit card Now, I don't know if the FICO algorithm looks at that one card, because let's say I had spread that 30,000 out across several cards. I have a feeling that my score wouldn't have moved if I had did that, but you know, it was just easier to use one card for the expense. But one of the things that you need to do is this needs to become a revolution. The American income problem. People need to dramatically increase their income. And what do I say dramatically? If you can, you're making 35,000 and you can increase your income by 20,000. That's a, that's a dramatic shift because I'm just looking at it. I'm just looking at it from this perspective. First of all, why haven't Americans had a real and substantial raise in 40 years. What was going on? And a big part of that is corporations changed. If you go back from the turn of the century up until about 19, 1990, corporations were like, excuse me, dear worker, if you work for us and you give us 20, 30 years, we will give you a pension. We will take care of you. And that was kind of like an unwritten contract that corporate America had with the workforce. And for a lot of people, because I remember years ago, I used to work at this company called LabCorp. And uh, they had a lab and a clinic in Carrollton, and the name of the company is Southwire, which is a billion dollar Georgia company, right? And I know this because they had a lot of retirees come in wearing that gold watch. They had a lot of people that retired, which means that these people were getting a pension, they were getting um, free medical care, they were being taken care of. That contract with the American workforce ended. It is no longer practice. It is no longer in place unless you work for the government and you can retire from the government and get a pension or retire from the military and get a pension. Those are and maybe police officers and firefighters in certain cities and maybe teachers in certain cities. But other than that, it doesn't exist anymore. So not only did the contract become broken, as I showed you, wages stagnated. Wages did not budge for about 40 years. The wage increase has happened in the last five years. So for like, like 45 years, let's go ahead and say, for 40 years, the American worker didn't get a substantial raise. And what corporate America was doing and what these MBAs were doing was figuring out ways to get more productivity, more production, cut cost, ship jobs offshore. And this is what has happened. And I saw a comment and I, I, I don't fully agree with this comment, but there's some truth to it. That the reason that so many people are poor is a smaller group of people have made a lot of money. Just being honest, just, you know, I, I'm a messenger of truth. I look at the data, I look at the numbers, I tell the truth. And with that procedure that happened that got rid of the manufacturing, that got rid of these jobs, that got rid of the upward mobility opportunity, because when you look at the income at the top, Income at the top is growing. If you're 140 billion people in America and you're making 35,000 a year or less, your income ain't moving. But if you're in that, me, my income went up 
but I'm a business owner. My income has gone up. Like, I, all right, I'll, I'll just kind of pull back the veal. Uh, for a while, after I made that 1.5 million, I was doing about two to 300,000 a year consistently. And then I got into the online course business and then boom, my income exploded. And then 2020 happened. Most money I ever made in my, my life, most money ever I made in my life was 2020 in one year. And what I see is at the top, because I have a video on the corporate game talking about business owner income and income at the top has dramatically increased. It has dramatically increased. So you got two choices here. You can remain where you are or you can try to position yourself where you can get in the lane where your income can increase. Because I'm in the lane where my income can increase. Also, I'm in the lane where my income can go down. Like I said, I'm at a point where a bad year for me financially would be about 300,000. That's a bad year. That's a bad year. And I, I don't mean to be dismissive or to talk down to people, but what I've done is I've positioned myself where a bad year is $300,000 a year. That's a bad year for me. That's a bad year. A bad year, I could still pay cash for a Porsche. I could still buy a million dollar house. I could still eat steak in a bad year, in a bad year. So let's talk about how did I get here? Because let's go back 20 years. I used to be just like you. I was working the job and I had no savings. My credit was okay. It was a little shaky, a little shaky, but I didn't understand money. I didn't understand how to make money. I didn't understand value. I understood none of this stuff. And I, like I said, was just like you. What changed? Education. The most educated people make the most money, whether it's through self-education or whether it's through formal education. That is an irrefutable fact. And what I have done is massively educated myself over these last 20 years. Because this is the reason that I tell you, start a business. Why? Because a business is gonna make you very uncomfortable. And then that uncomfort and that discomfort, you're gonna learn a lot. I didn't know how to do YouTube when I first started you doing YouTube. You can go back to 2009, go to the main channel and look at my earlier videos. I didn't know how to do this. Like, once again, and I talked about this, I don't edit these videos. I have taught myself how to do a video that I don't have to edit. When I first started, I used to be in front of the camera and then there would be one minute pauses and I would be thinking what I was going to say and I would and literally when I first started YouTube to put up a 15 minute video took me 12 to 24 hours to film it to process it to edit it and to upload it 15 minutes now because I have taught myself how to create videos that I don't have to edit I can literally pump out 10 videos a day. Once again, this is what I'm doing. Uh, you know, this is kind of a high priority day. Yesterday was a YouTube day. I did YouTube videos. Today is a YouTube day. And I, you know, and I'm doing something that I normally don't do. I am going to um, meet someone for a car because he says he's got cash and he's coming to get it. And I'm meeting him at three o'clock. So this is a kind of a trunicated day. But I, before I meet him, I'm going to do three videos and I'm not only going to do them, I'm going to process them. I'm going to upload them. 2009, that wasn't possible. Three videos would have taken me three to five days. So w w where am I going with this? This isn't about me going to know how to do YouTube videos. No, no, no. This, this is, that's not the message. 
The message is you need to educate yourself because that is what removed me from being like you. And I'm not saying you're a bad person or your breath stinks. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if you are the average American making 35 K a year or less, you are screwed. You don't make enough money for retirement to save money for retirement. You don't make enough money to send your kids to school. You don't make money, enough money to afford a decent house. You don't make enough money to live in a decent neighborhood. You don't make enough money to afford decent food. So once again, you have a choice. You can remain the same or you can start educating yourself to make more money. And this is the thing, by no stretch of the imagination do you have to become rich. I'm not saying that. You don't have to become rich. If you can move your income from 35,000 to 75,000 or best 100,000, that's a game changer. That's a game changer. That opens up so many things for you you can do. Because I was just stunned that your granddaddy made more money than you do. Your granddaddy who didn't graduate from high school made more money than you did. And your granddad operated in an environment where things were cheaper. Your grandfather operated in an environment like your grandfather made 5,600 bucks a year. The car cost 2,700. Now the average car cost more than what you make. The average car is like 45,000. It's not half your income. Half your income would be like 15,000. That's, that's a good used car, half your income. And the thing with the houses, your grandfather could buy a house that was twice his income, two times his income. Now you're looking at a house that is gonna be 10 to 12 times your income. Even though the mortgage rates are much cheaper because your mortgage rates for your grandfather were seven, eight, 10, 11, 12%. But the cost of the house was so low that your, your granddaddy's mortgage payment was under a hundred bucks a month. 30 year fixed, hundred bucks a month. And this is what's funny. Your grandfather was making money. The banks were making money. Savings accounts were paying high interest. It was a completely different world. I remember growing up and remember savings accounts paying five and 7%, which means that your grandfather could have put his money in the bank and got a return that was greater than reflation. Your grandfather could have avoided the stock market and just put his money in the bank and got five to 7% on his money. He didn't have to look at stock charts. He, it was simpler back then. And the, the opportunities were so wide open. And I'm just sitting there like, because once again, I agree and I don't agree about what I said about that corporate America has his neck on people's, a foot on people's necks. It's true and it's not true. And I'm gonna tell you why it's true and it's not true. Free will. You don't have to occupy that spot if you don't want to. Like once again, 20 some years ago, I was just like you. And I got sick and tired of being sick and tired and I decided to do something about it. And that's why I'm in the position where 300K is a bad year for me. That's a bad year. And that really started happening like 2017, I did like 2 million. Then 2018, I went down to 500,000. And then 2019, I went to 300,000. Then 2020 happened, millions. Um, once again, I'm still learning. 
And this is one of the things. I am 55 years of age and I still read books and I still read blogs and I still watch YouTube videos. I am still a student. You have to be in the process of continuing to learn, continuing to read. I'm getting ready to take this course. You have to put yourself in school. You have to spend your money on educational things. You have to spend your money to get in the room with certain people. You have to spend your money. And once again, like I said, the research literally blew my mind when I understood that adjusted for inflation, your grandfather made more money. This is why your grandfather was able to work and your grandmother stayed home and raised your mom and dad because your grandfather made more money and things were cheaper. But once again, let me just say this. You have a choice. You can participate in the American workforce or you can move to the business class. Not a side hustle, but a small business. Once again, we need to change our conversation about, because you know the, the side hustle denotes that something that you can do in 10 hours and make twice what you make on your full-time job. Um, I'm gonna say that can be true. Because uh, last five months, I haven't worked 40 hours a week. I don't think the car business, that had me doing a lot of work. So that's one of the reasons I took a break because the car business took so much out of me. But um, I'm probably about to start working a good 25 hours a week. And that's why I say that I am semi-retired because I have full control of my time. Like yesterday, um, I did some videos, but in the, in the morning, I hung out with my girlfriend. She didn't leave here until Seven. She didn't leave here the seven. And um, one of the things that you have to understand, and one of the things that you have to acknowledge is you have to build these things. You have to build these things. Like um, I have the ability because I already know what my income is for the year. I mean, that's already in the bank. So I don't have to make money to pay my bills because I made money last year and I took a certain side, certain uh, part of my income and put it away. And then I actually, I actually pay myself a few different ways. And I'm gonna do this on the corporate game talking about you know how to pay yourself because my YouTube income, that money's got to be taxed. So what I'm going to do will probably, um, I'll pay myself five months out the year and then maybe, well, I'm probably going to pay myself the whole year because once I get to cranking these online courses and building this stuff out, um, yeah. So I'm going to pay myself my salary and then I'm going to have more money, money that's above and beyond that, that I'm going to give myself as a distribution and then I got to pay taxes on that. But once again, playing the corporate game because of that car rental business that I spent four hundred thousand dollars on it is I'm not going to pay federal taxes probably for the next three or four years because of that business. And that that's something I'll go into in the corporate game, because right now, most of you young pups, your guys are young pups. I'm not trying to be dismissive or talk down to you, but you young pups. You're still wet behind the ears. You don't know what you don't know. And you need to start playing this business game because corporate America, unless you're in one of the very few and rare companies that still have a pension, that still has that contract with you, um, you're, you're on your own. You're 100% on your own. There's no Superman, there's no Spider-Man, there's no Avengers, there's no Justice League. There's no one coming to save you. You are 100% on your own. And you need to make actions and moves as if you were on your own and your future was highly dependent upon the decisions you make. Because 10 years ago, 
I made a decision, well, actually, 13 years ago, I made a decision to write a book. And that decision that I made 13 years ago is why I'm here where I'm at today. So the decisions you make 10 years ago, 13, 15 years ago, is what your future will be. So you need to start making better decisions that will impact your future in a more positive and productive manner because inflation ain't gonna stop. Inflation is not gonna stop. Once again, your 1960 inflation was 1.72%. And you could get 5% at the bank on a savings account, 7% on certain accounts. So there wasn't any inflation. Your grandfather was able to make more money your grandma was able to stay home and make muffins and cook up some meatloaf and mashed potatoes and stuff. So your grandfather went today, went to work and came home. And you you know, I, I know you don't want to think about this, but your grandma and granddad was getting busy. Cause you know why? Cause your grandma, she wasn't stressed. She was at home all day doing what she needed to do. And when granddad was like, Hey girl, Hey, Let's do that. All right, daddy. They got busy because they had time. They had freedom. They had time to take vacation. This is why your, dad, your granddad and grandma could take vacations because your dad had a job that had vacation time and a pension. And also, if you didn't know, this is how the pensions worked. If your granddad was married at the time that he died, the pension would not stop with his death. The pension will automatically roll over the grandma. That's how America used to work. That's how America used to work. And we got them away from that because once we sent manufacturing to China and Japan, and actually it didn't even go straight up to China. It went to Japan. It went to Vietnam. It went to Taiwan. Then, you know, China was just like, Hey, we will take, we will take that manufacturing. Yes, we will do it. We will become the manufacturing arm of the world. We will do it. Our Kung Fu is better than your Kung Fu. Hoo-yah! And they did it. Japan, China is the world's second largest economy, but they've got a lot of issues because once again, America's called the great American experiment and the experiment is still going on. But once again, you've got to start a small business. And once again, you don't have to become rich. Let's just be really clear. You just need to add an additional 20 to $50,000 to your current income. That is a game changer. That is a game changer. That changes everything. All right? So that's all I got for you. And this Sunday at 4 p.m., we're gonna start the first training of home economics, the links below. So we will get into that. That's all I got for you guys. I will talk to you in the next one.